everyone, today I'm going to talk about why you should go into a saturated market and why it's not too late to become an Instagram influencer in 2019. And at the end of this video, I'll talk about the tips on how to stand out in a saturated market. If someone tells me that they don't want to go into a market because it's too saturated or they have a slim chance of making it, well then they're basically killing all of society. Think about it, if we all stopped going into saturated markets, there would be no new athletes, no new singers, no new actors, which means no new movies, no new songs, no new sports TV. Who's gonna be Kylie Jenner's new best friend now that Jordan got kicked out? Who's gonna be the new Rebecca Black? You're basically contributing to a dying society if we all don't go into saturated market. The second reason you should go into a saturated market is that saturated markets are active. This means more awareness of a product, or in our case, Instagram influencers. This validates the idea that Instagram influencing is the way to go. You've seen so many success stories of all these Instagram influencers making money, loving life, and traveling the world. Why not do it for yourself? You basically have full living proof that this shit works and this shit is achievable. People are looking up to Instagram influencers for advice and motivation. People buy into people. People don't buy into products. This is is the route our society is going into so you might as well jump into the bandwagon. The third reason is that some people blow up overnight. Sometimes it just takes that one photo or that one video to go viral and BAM! You're insta famous. How do you stand out in a saturated market? Well, I go into more detail at the end of this video, but I like to do what's called ICs. Now, I'm not talking about the drink. ICs is the acronym I made up for the type of content you want to be posting on your Instagram. You want interesting, controversial, educational, entertaining, and or shareable content on your Instagram. Interesting content. Pretty self-explanatory. You want people to be interested in your page and people interested in what you have to say. Controversial content. When shit offends people, that's when conversations happen. Now I'm not saying you should go out and record yourself punching everyone on the street, but think about the tabloids. Whenever there's something controversial, people put their time and energy into writing their opinions on a particular post that they might not even know much information about, but because it's so controversial and because they see it in tabloids, they can't bear to keep their opinions inside. And that's when they truly want to share the content and repost the content and comment and like and all that kind of shit. Just think with me for a second. Why did Rebecca Black blow up? A lot of people that I talked to, I'm not saying this is my opinion, they thought that her song was just terrible and annoying, but she still blew up. And so my point is, be creative with the content that you post. Try to make it controversial, try to make people talk about what you're posting. Educational content. Most people are learning at least one new thing every day, whether it's how to open a beer can with your teeth or how to write an essay. Unless you're sitting on the couch all day doing nothing, the average person is typing into Google at least once a day on how to do something. Especially if you're a coach on Instagram, you want to be providing value to your followers. You want to be providing information to let your followers know that you're the expert in the field. Entertaining content. Why do you open up your Instagram? 90% of the time it's because you're just fucking bored. A lot of those meme pages blow up because they simply post funny content. A lot of people blow up through Instagram stories because they're sharing their personality and they're showing their entertaining side. The last letter of ICs stand for shareable content. That was kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> Going back to the meme page as an example, a lot of those memes are relatable and people want to share it with their friends. I'm pretty sure most of you have those group chats where you share a meme page because there's one post that you all can relate to. The fourth reason you should go into a saturated market is that you're no longer the guinea pig. That means you no longer have to test things out. There are so many videos like what I wish I knew before I started a business, how to grow on Instagram in 2019, how to date in 2019, how to eat a macaroon in 2019. <laughs> you can learn from these people's mistakes and you don't have to go through the trial and error period because all those people have done it for you. I've been using Instagram for years so that's why I have a great understanding of how the algorithm works and I have tested and proven strategies. So you can grow your Instagram pretty fast because I already give out four years of my knowledge on my Instagram and there's so much information that you could search up online. So before you start anything I recommend you always do your research. The fifth reason you should go into a saturated market is that saturated markets are everywhere so you might as well get into it. Microsoft was running the game, now Apple has taken over. Someone had a crazy idea to allow strangers to take them to their destination. Now Ubers are taking over taxis. Sadly, not in Vancouver. Remember when we had to actively leave our house to go rent a DVD from Blockbuster? Now we have Netflix. And chill. 
Another reason why you should go into saturated markets is that saturated markets forces growth. This forces people to keep innovating, to try to beat the competitors, try to be more creative, and this doesn't allow you to be complacent. Without market saturation, without this growth, we would still probably be riding horse carriages to work. Remember, don't contribute to the dying society. The last reason I have for you today is that avoiding failure is avoiding the true meaning of life. A lot of people tell me that they don't want to start something because they're too afraid to fail or they're too afraid of judgment. The the worst feeling is to look back several years later and regret not starting something. Even if you don't reach your goal, it's a good learning experience and it might open up other avenues for you. At least you'll have closure and you'll learn and grow from your experience. I tried a 9 to 5 job and I hated it and I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. If you're not getting out of your comfort zone, you're going to be complacent and you're not going to grow or you're not going to get anywhere. I want to talk about success stories that will hopefully motivate you. Some of my friends started Instagram in 2018, last year, and now they have almost 200,000 followers on Instagram. My clients grew from 400 followers to 4,000 followers in one or two months. A lot of my followers have surpassed the 10k mark which has been their goal for the longest time. So if they can do it, you can do it too. So how can you be successful in a saturated market? The first tip is pretty obvious and that's to be creative. Figure out what the competitors are not doing. And please, please, please do not be another pretty face on Instagram. We already have enough of those. Put some substance into your captions and to your stories. Be influential, which is actually what an Instagram influencer should do. I get it, I get it. Instagram started off as a platform to just simply express your creativity. So if you want to go that route, then by all means do that. But in order to stand out in a saturated market, you want to provide value to others. Tip number two is to not follow money or fame. If you want to grow your Instagram account because you just want to be Instagram famous or you want to make money, then you will have a really difficult time getting there because you will have your good days and you will have your bad days. With anything in life, you should always have a greater purpose. I always tell my clients, what is your why? Figure out the greater purpose behind something instead of vanity metrics. I use my Instagram because I want to inspire people. I started using Instagram as a catalog for my recipes and my fitness journey and that's how I grew my following because I was passionate about it. Tip number three is to have a good relationship with the platform and actually enjoy an aspect of it. I genuinely love editing and taking photos for my Instagram. I would spend hours just editing one photo or I would spend hours just writing out one caption and that's because I truly love it. The last tip is to analyze the market or your competitors. So using the Kardashians as an example, how do they always stay relevant in the media? You always want to analyze the people that are trending. I don't really keep up with pop culture nor do I really care about it, but they somehow manage to keep popping up into people's conversations. What do you think about the whole Kylie Jenner and Jordan situation? I don't really know if I want to open up the comments for this discussion. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video inspires you to pursue your dream no matter matter how saturated the market is. If you enjoyed this video, I appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and you can follow my Instagram where I post more Instagram tips daily.